Today we're balancing propellers using this handy tool, the Dubro True Spin Prop Balancer. Let's get started. Hi, Tom here from RC Plan Lab. Today we're going to balance some propellers using one of my favorite tools, the Dubro True Spin Prop Balancer. Uh, this one is mine, but you can get your own link in the description from Amazon. So this tool has been uh, made by uh, Dubro for quite a while. It's been available for many, many years. Uh, this one I've had, gosh, I can't remember when I bought it. It's been a long time. Uh, there have been other tools that have come and gone, but uh, this one seems to have stood the test of time. Uh, it's a pretty simple tool, really. It has a spindle with a fairly quickly adjustable um, mandrel uh, that uh, sort of clamps your, pro your propeller right there in the middle. And then these two uprights, which um, if you look really close, right here, uh, rollers that the uh, spindle actually rolls on pretty smooth. And that's what uh, that's really all there is to it. Okay, so we've got the tool ready. I've got the spindle in my hand and all I'm lacking is a propeller. Oh, thank you, Ron. There's a propeller. So this is a APC 10.6 uh, E. So this is an electric prop, pretty lightweight propeller. Um, but this, this balancer is gonna have no problem at all uh, balancing this prop. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen this collet so that I can slide it off the spindle, like so. And then I'm gonna slide the propeller over the spindle onto the cone of the, uh, the stationary piece of the, of the uh, spindle. And if you notice, you might be able to see it, pick it up in the picture there, that you can see that the cone is sticking almost all the way through the hub of my prop. Now the nice thing about the Dubro tools, we have a flat side and we also have a cone side. So on this particular prop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this collet over, give that a turn, kind of lock it in place, and now you can see the propeller is spinning pretty true and it's locked in place on the spindle. And then the next thing I do is I simply set the prop on the rollers and the heavy blade is going to fall just like that. So now that we know which blade is heavy, we know which blade we need to add weight to. So to do that, protect my work surface here, we use this. This is a, it's a product by Minwax. It's a clear polyurethane. Uh, this happens to be a gloss. Happens to be a gloss. Um, I like using gloss because who doesn't like shiny things, right? So I'm not even going to take the propeller off the spindle, but I am going to note which blade is light. And I'm going to put the heavy blade in my other hand so that I don't grab the light blade um, with the fresh paint on it. So basically, all you do, give this a shake, hold the prop over your protective surface and give it a, give it a couple of blasts, wave it around, wait for the paint to dry. And then when it's dry, you can check the balance again. Okay, so now the blade is dry, um, nice and glossy finish. This stuff's really nice. Um, you can use this clear stuff to protect just about anything for nitro. It takes a few days for it to fully cure. Just want to point that out. Um, but the, the Minwax clear polyurethane, it is fuel proof after it's cured fully. So we've got the, got the paint on the blade there, as you can see. Kind of see the shine on it there. You put it back in there. And again, it's the same process. You just wait for the heavy blade to drop like that and add more paint to the light blade until the thing stays horizontal when you let go of it. Uh, so we'll give that another shot. Give it a wave, wave it around in the air like you just don't care. Sorry. All right, so that's nice and uh, that's cured again and we'll try it one more time. Getting better. You'll notice that it's resting almost horizontal, but not quite. Um, so it still requires a little bit of weight on that lightweight blade. I bet one more shot and we'll be there. There we go, the paint's nice and cured again. We'll put that, and you notice I've been putting the painted blade on the same side each time. For me, it just makes sense to do that to do it that way. That way, I have a consistent uh, a consistent layup on the rollers. Um, if I switch it over, I mean, it should theoretically balance the same. The heavy blade should fall to the opposite side. But sometimes with these rollers on these old Dubros, I find that consistency yields better results. But as you can see, our propeller is now 
nearly horizontal, certainly horizontal enough for me to call this propeller properly balanced. Okay, so that one's done. Uh, next, I'll show you how I balance a master air screw uh, plastic propeller designed for nitros. So we'll pull that off and, oh, thanks, Ron. There you go. Thanks. So this is a master air screw, um, pretty uh, common uh, propeller that you'll see on uh, nitro engines. Uh, one thing I like to show you that I like to do is uh, when, when you get a master air screw propeller right out of the package, uh, the edges, and we've mentioned it on the show a couple times, the edges are really very sharp. And if you're like me, you like to hand start your engines, um, you'll end up with scars on your fingers from these things cutting them. So what I like to do is I, tell, I like to take my X-Acto knife, hey, thanks Ron, and then I just run the, the basically the, the edge of the blade right down the leading edge of the prop. Just kind of scraping that, get that sharp edge off there. You can see here on my uh, board here, you can see the shavings that are coming off. So just scrape that. Be careful not to gouge into the blade on the front or the back. Uh, you don't want to create any uh, scratches because those will create stress risers in the plastic. And the last thing you want is this thing coming apart at 12,000 RPM. Uh, so basically, yeah, you just smooth that out. And I do that on the leading and the trailing edges. And I'm not using a lot of force. I'm just letting the knife kind of do most of the work, almost as if it's sand, and now it's nice and smooth. So I'll do that on this side also. This is an old trick. A friend of mine, uh, Dave Taylor, hope he doesn't mind me using his name on the show. He showed me this trick many, many years ago. And uh, I've been doing it on all my plastic propellers, APC propellers too, uh, just to protect my fingers because I like to hand start my airplanes. So now that we have that done, I'll set that over to the side. Thanks, Ron. And then uh, balancing the, the master air screw propeller is pretty much just exactly like balancing the last one. I'm going to take the arbor. And because the hub of this propeller is a little bit thicker than the other one, I can use both cones facing each other. Whoops, that one's a little tight, so I'm going to loosen that again. I can have both cones facing each other and they exactly center the prop on that uh, spindle. And then I'll give that a, a turn to tighten it. And there we go. And it's the exact same process as before. Once again, heavy blade in the hand uh, that you're not going to be spraying with. And then I'm just going to give it, because it's so close, I'm just going to give it two really, really light shots of paint. Turn that so you can see it. Wave it around. Wait for that to cure. And then we'll check it again. All right, that's cured, so we're gonna set that on there. Still a little bit heavy on this side. So once again, another shot here on the light hand, or on the light blade. There we go. I went with three shots that time because it didn't seem like two shots made much difference. There we go, that's dry now. That's the nice thing about that stuff. If you use nice light coats, it dries pretty fast, actually. So there we go a balanced master air screw propeller. So this one's now balanced. I'm going to take it off the spindle. Same idea. Loosen up the collet by loosening that up. Pull the collet off and pull the propeller off. And there's a balanced master air screw propeller ready for use. Now I'm going to show you how to balance a wooden master air screw propeller. Thank you, Ron. There you go. Same process. I'm going to brush, brush this stuff off of here. We don't want to get any of that on our finish. Um, Wood propeller, same, uh, same, same, same principle. Uh, mounted up on the on the spindle. Give that a lock. Make sure that's nice and uh, not cockeyed or anything like that. Um, again, nice thing about the wooden propellers. This one actually has a pretty nice finish on it. Um, but the clear polyurethane, wherever you spray it on, will actually add another layer of protection. Some guys like to spray the whole prop with them, uh, but I'm not going to do that on this one because this one has a pretty good finish on it already. Just a reminder, these are these props are brand new out of the package, so um, the last one wasn't too bad. Uh, this one, we'll, we'll see what happens, but same idea. You just lay it up on the rollers, and holy cow, look at that thing. Um, wow. Yeah, that one's that one's pretty uh, pretty seriously out of balance. This one's going to require quite a bit of quite a bit of paint to balance. Um, but same procedure as before. Grab the heavy blade and uh, give that blade the light blade a. I'm going to give this one quite a few shots because it's pretty far out of balance. It's all uh, cured now, so let's uh, let's see where we're at. I still got quite a ways to go, so I'm going to take care of that, and then uh, we'll get back with you when I get it close. Okay, here we are 
about 10 coats of paint later. Uh, this one was really, really pretty far out. Um, wooden props can be that way uh, just because of the nature of wood. You know, the wood can be denser on one blade than the other. Uh, it's a little harder to control like you can with plastic props or uh, FRP, but hopefully this will be the last time uh, we put it on there. Not too shabby. I'll check it on the other side. Perfect. And the great thing about this tool is it'll balance any prop, small to big. How about this one, Tom? Yes, Ron. Even this one. Same idea, same procedure. You just lock everything in there just like on, on the other props. Here, let me move heavy wooden guy out of the way. And then uh, I'm going to move this, have to move this a little bit forward because we're dealing with a bigger propeller here. And I'm going to remove this. So that we can really see this thing working. Um, this is a carbon fiber prop off of Ron's 42% yak. And as you can see, it's pretty doggone close. Um, for, well, maybe I spoke too soon. That's something that you can say, that I can say about the Dubro balancer is the heavier the prop, usually the finer you can get it to, uh, to show whether a prop uh, is out of balance or not air currents, things like that. If you're using this thing next to a uh, uh, an air duct, which we've got one above us here, Ron had to shut it off, um, that will affect uh, larger propellers because it does get sensitive, more sensitive, the heavier prop you go. Uh, but as you can see, this one's pretty close. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over just, just to show, um, for consistency's sake, um, that this prop, pretty close to being perfect. Um, and that's the nice thing about the carbon fiber props is they control that. They're vacuum bagged. They control the amount of resin that goes in them. Uh, the carbon fiber itself is very lightweight. So um, no need to add any weight to this one. Once again, I'm Tom from RC Plane Lab. Thanks for watching. Hey, why you're... I'm Ron. And that's Ron. Be sure to check out our other videos uh, and hit that like and subscribe button for us. <laughs>